When did you get bored in the Giants game? Oh, um, you know, probably right after halftime. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I mean, once, you know, it's 26 nothing at the half. and But you, you keep working, and I was into it still. You got to keep entertaining the masses. Yeah. But uh, I always say your job kind of as a broadcaster is to inform or entertain. And you try to mix both of them. And if the game's really good, you don't have to entertain, right? The game takes care of itself. And when the game becomes not so good like that one did, then you got to kind of entertain. And Brad and I try to think of, you know, big picture stuff and the next week and yeah. all these things that happen. So of course, we were talking about the big matchup with Aaron Rodgers at that point, but uh, that didn't come to fruition, obviously. So you wrote something interesting in the group text that I agree with, but I think RJ oh. and Bobby would disagree with. You said that the Rodgers injury was obviously a season ender. No playoffs possibility for the Jets? Oh, um, I think he'd be out even if they make the playoffs, right? I mean, with the Achilles. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. you were you talking about season ender for the Jets or season ender for Rodgers? Oh, for Rodgers. Okay. So you're not you don't no, think no, the Jets you don't think the Jets have no chance. Uh no, they have a chance. They have a they have a really good team. Um I think the sad thing is for Zach Wilson, let's face it, the Jets were gonna not only go to the Super Bowl, but they were gonna win it if they had Aaron Rodgers. That's gonna be the narrative after mm -hmm. the season ends. Oh, if we would have had Aaron, <laughs> we were winning the Super Bowl. Well, he's won one <laughs> in his career, right? But I mean, Zach Wilson, he's in a, I don't want to say a tough spot, but man, he's in a tough spot, right? I mean, I don't know how other, other way to put it. Because again, Aaron Rodgers would have made that throw. Aaron Rodgers would have scored that mm -hmm. touchdown. Jets would have won that game if they had Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> and, and clearly they would have won more with Aaron Rodgers, right? Uh, then they're going to win with Zach Wilson, we think. But we'll see. Is you know, what what's it like, Babe? Uh, babe Lothiger, jo join us here, one hundred five through the fan. Like so, when you take over a game in the middle of the game, you didn't prepare for the game. You didn't prepare as the as the number one. Can you give them a break on that? Uh, yes, yes. Um, it is your job to go in, and while it's great to say next man up, <laughs> the next man up would have liked to have had a few reps in practice that week, <laughs> and you know you, you don't get them as the backup, but. Here's the thing, too. Now, obviously, you don't want to lose Aaron Rodgers. So, but if you lose your starter, if you lose him early in the season, it's I think it's an advantage than losing him late in the season. And I say that because Zach Wilson's got a lot of work, right? He's got a lot of work in training camp. He's played a bunch in the preseason. You're more ready to go today than you would be if you sat around for 10 weeks and never really worked with your offense. And I think that benefited, we saw it with Cooper Rush last year, right? That goes out in game one. Cooper Rush was not, he was a week removed from playing a ton of football in the preseason games and getting a ton of reps in camp. So I think you're better prepared, bottom line. Zach Wilson's better prepared to go win this game on Sunday than he would have been if you're 10 weeks into the season and you get thrown in there. How surprised are you that Wilson has been a bust based upon what you thought of him coming out? Yeah, I didn't. Honestly, I didn't have a real firm conviction on him either way. Um, what is funny is that the number two and three pick of that draft are both going to be on the field suited up. <laughs> Trey, Trey Lance was taken third in that draft and Zach Wilson second. And mm. I don't think either team is, is, well, San Francisco clearly was not happy with the pick ultimately. And, um, but, hey, he, he, he was a second pick in the draft for a reason, right? At some point, somebody saw a lot in him. And, you know, we'll, we'll see. He's, he's so young in his career, too, that I, I just don't look at a guy 16 starts into his career and say, well, he can't do it. And, and uh, keep this in mind. He was 5-4 and four as a starter last year. Now, he didn't play great, but he was 5-4. and four, And if you want to – Look at the uh, Monday night game. You know, Aaron Rodgers took four snaps, so he might as well have been the starter. So the last 10 games he's played, the Jets are 6-4. and four. Babe, when we're looking at the Jets defense and, you know, just how talented they are, they're, they're, they're very, very good with the, you know, the four they have up front and the way they're able to pressure and kind of drop seven. Is the biggest vulnerability here that the Cowboys can potentially take advantage of is maybe some of these quick hits that they can get to CD with Michael Carter there in the slot. Cause there's, there's not a lot of weaknesses 
there on that Jets defense. No, there's not. They're, they're, they're good all up and down, and they should be. They've got a bunch of first-round picks there. And when you're as bad as the Jets have been, and they have been the worst team in the NFL over the last seven years, you're going to get a lot of high draft picks. <laughs> so some at some point, some coach is going to come along and say, man, we've, we've got a lot of talented guys over here. And uh, But the interesting thing is they don't blitz. They, they play a ton of zone. Uh, they're not complicated defensively. They they sit there with those four down linemen, and they come after you. And then, by the way, they don't take them out either. Quentin Williams played every snap. <laughs> he mm-hmm. played sixty nine snaps uh, on Monday night. Their defensive tackle. So they they do not rotate a bunch of guys in and out like you see most teams do. But they're just solid on all three levels. Um, but you're right about the slot. Sauce Gardner. Uh, he has taken I think five snaps in the slot out of about 1,100 snaps that he's played so far in the NFL. So they do not mix him around. He stays on one side. Again, it's not a complicated defense. You know who's going to be out there, and you know where they're going to line up. They're just really good at what they do. Babe, I'm going to ask you a a, a trivia question. Usually Babe has the trivia questions. And I'm I'm, I'm going to need your answer in the form of a question, please. Oh. Like Jeopardy. Is this Jeopardy? Yes. Who was the last Jets quarterback to throw for 4,000 yards in the season? Well, not only is he the last, he's the only one. That would be Joe Willie Namath. Wow. Isn't that the most amazing number? I mean, that's 50 years ago. He did it in a 14-game season. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, a, it's like the equivalent now of throwing for 6,000 yards where you saw. Wow. And that was in a day where, obviously, they weren't throwing the ball like they did today. Here, I'll give you another one. Ready? Who is the only, or which I should say, is the only NFL team that does not have a 4,000-yard passer. Chicago. So we, There you go. Very good, Bobby wow. Bell. Chicago Bears. Let's go to a bar and win the trivia. <laughs> <laughs> Only team with that one. That's ba- crazy. Babe, did the Cowboys answer any question in your mind with the week one performance? Any, any question you had about them? Or just, it was such a dominating performance, yeah. which isn't a revelation that I don't think anybody saw that coming. Uh, right. When we talked last week, I, I did point out, I didn't think the Giants were there yet. Um, and th- that game was pretty evident that, that they could not play with this Cowboys team. But I, I, I told everybody, um, yeah. I had, Phil Sims called me, we always talk, and I just said, what? this is a really good football team. And I said, they don't have a weakness where you say, we we got to figure out a way to cover up this or this guy or that position group. I mean, they're good across the board. Um, offense, defense, every every level, they're, they're really good. Um, and, again, I would have loved to have been the one that said, I, I think they'll beat the Giants 40 to nothing. Right. <laughs> but that, that was a really dominating performance. I mean, I, there's no way around it. The one thing – it, it got so sloppy, and it's funny because I hear people talking about Dak, and Dak didn't do much, and this. And that weather was so bad up there. I mean, it was it was coming down about as hard as it could come down at times. And it's just, hey, it's tough to throw the ball, tough to catch the ball in those conditions. And uh, I, I thought it was miraculous that Cowboys didn't turn it over. Tony Pollard had the fumble, but Tyler Biotis got on it. But to come out of that game in those conditions and not turn it over was really remarkable. Babe, I think this is going to be a really big week for Damone Clark, um, you know, because it, it feels like a game where the Jets are going to set up to really try and run the ball. They go out there with a lot of three tight end sets and and really try and, and you know, I think work the defense there. And that's been an area the Cowboys have struggled in. How big is this, do you think, for Damone Clark to step up? Mozzie Smith, Jonathan Hankins, those guys keeping him clean. Well, I don't know how much Mozzie Smith is going to play. He, he didn't <laughs> play much last week, and he didn't play great. So I could see, you know, I wouldn't, I'm, we're not counting on Mozzie Smith to stop the run. Let me just say that. Um, you know, I don't know if it's Damone Clark. It's the whole really front seven and the safeties getting involved as well. But yeah, if you're the Jets, it's, it's twofold. Um, one, you don't want Zach Wilson throwing it 50 times. And two, I think the giant game showed, and I think it was happening early last year. Um, you don't want to have this pass rush. You do not want to be in third and eight and face this pass rush. So I think, you know, running the ball, running the ball, I I think they're just going to try to run it, (laughs) 
make three yards, run it, make four yards, and get it to third and three, third and two, something in, in that uh, manageable third down situation. Now, most teams want to do that, but I think this week uh, it's going to be even more so than that. Plus, this is a team like the Cowboys. They can play to their defense a little bit, right? Their, their defense is going to keep them in a lot of games. They don't have to score 30 points to win because that defense is so good. Thank you, sir. Have a fantastic call on Sunday. We'll be listening. Okay, thank you, guys. Have a great day. The great Babe Laufenberg brought to you by Johnson Fitness and Wellness Home Fitness Equipment.